I forgot it. Sorry about that. But anyways, today uh, I just click the record button and basically everything after this will be recorded. So basically the the uh, sound and uh, the um, this display you are uh, seeing. Uh, okay, the one wire uh, took basically the most of the time when I was testing these uh, systems and it gave me some headache and basically um, how to avoid that headache is to use some pre-written code unless of course if you want to uh, write your own that's just fine but if we go first into the uh, one wire introduction okay the the idea was uh, behind the one wire is just genius you just need single wire and of course the ground wire so single twisted pair wire to make these uh, uh, relatively uh, low speed and Okay, now my internet connection is unstable, so uh, I hope you are st still receiving it. So <coughs> the uh, uh, it's very simple uh, hardware-wise. You just need to the uh, reference uh, voltage wire and then this this one wire uh, to uh, the, the have the data on the uh, for low data rate. Uh, solutions and this is actually the hardware side is very simple and also the software side is say relatively simple since practically you don't have too many timing issues there uh, and basically the two wire system uh, uh, one wire <laughs> sorry the one wire actually works uh, with the parasitic power if needed of course for the exercises I recommend you to use the uh, uh, this this voltage uh, available from the board for that uh, Dallas chip but anyways for a real-life system you just need to uh, supply power the on high state for long enough time and it, I think it was 10 seconds and that powers up this uh, sensor or whatever is on, online and then you can actually access it okay so uh, and some examples of one-way devices if you have ever used i button or something similar to that to access some uh, say uh, I have seen this actually on last time when I was on a uh, this uh, indoors miniature golf course they had I button type of uh, tags there for the customers okay um, and all sorts of systems available for actually all the real-time clocks and let's see that was almost all but quick look at the um, this application note link okay there we are and only four types of data transactions there so practically uh, the right one means that you keep okay you keep the uh, signal low for six microseconds and then release it high for 64 microseconds the timing is here parameter a b c and then the right zero is basically the same about the same well exactly the same uh, duration 70 microseconds long in total but actually it goes low and then stays there for uh, 
uh, 60 mic microseconds low. So it's quite the opposite than the uh, write one. Then read is similar to write one, except then the master samples the uh, whatever that uh, that device is sending, if it's sending zero or one. And basically it samples at after typically nine microseconds after releasing of the this uh, this signal. Um, okay, and then the uh, uh, bus reset. Uh, G means that there must be a some time after uh, the, the latest uh, last uh, the, the data sequence that G value is here. Well, in standard it's zero, but, but in fast speed it's two overdrive is two point five. But anyways, this uh, uh, reset signal is very long compared to others. So so we have four hundred and eighty microseconds long. The the, uh, uh, the signal low and then releasing it for a certain time, and then basically you must again sample since after the reset there are any devices on online then basically the devices will uh, set the uh, that uh, line to zero so practically this is very simple uh, data transmission operation there um and to make it even a little bit easier, this uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Dallas or Maxim Integrated actually has also provided you these code examples, which do not directly work. You need to do some local adaptation. Of course, you need to uh, replace these uh, send data byte to port and read data byte with real uh, functions, but okay, you have this uh, hardware access to or software access to hardware. There are this uh, pin input and pin output, uh, <coughs> the the uh, or actually single port when you make it as in the definition you make it okay you must make it the uh, oh. does it show it here no it doesn't you must make it uh, uh, the, the, the uh, pull it up so it's it's the op well resistive pull up mode um, Resist the pull up mode, then you just basically can access the output pin and read the what is the input. But you need to write this code yourself <coughs> for this adaptation for, for the uh, PSOC 5. And then uh, how to make this tick delay to work. Okay. Uh, the tick delay in here for some reason is uh, one tick should be 0 0.25 microseconds. Well, uh, there is a function CY delay US which is one microsecond delay. So what I did actually, I just forgot the, uh, well, I didn't implement that override, overdrive speed at all, which makes this actually quite much simpler code too. So tick delay in my case is tick delay in microseconds. Tick values then actually everything is multiplied by four. So uh, in my case I have tick delay in microseconds. I just remove these uh, times four. Uh, why did I do that? Well, why do you want to make calculations every time you are calling these functions. 
So this actually should be a lookup uh, table kind of uh, variables, but the, the example code has been written by a bunch of morons or something like that. That's, that's probably Java coders code. Nothing against Java coders, just a Java. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah. So I made my own tick delay function for my, which gives microsecond. Basically that was easy, just removing those. And then in, instead of tick delay, I used the uh, CY delay US. And after that, actually, the, uh, this code works just fine. Yeah, there. Um, then this uh, example code here, how to read DS2432, well, well, interesting, but not useful in our case, since we have different sensor and different protocol there. Okay, different sensor. DS1822. <coughs> Just make wires correct ground data. VDD. This is the power. Then um, remembering that this is actually addressed device. Okay. Uh, I gave three hints. You can actually either skip ROM value here. Well, you have only one single uh, temperature sensor online. So basically you then can skip the, uh, the uh, ROM on reading uh, from the device. Uh, or then another way is to read the ROM once and save the address for later use. Third one would be the search for ROM that uh, takes a little bit long time, but it's not that difficult either. Uh, there is the search ROM, uh, the, the, the uh, code available on Maxim integrated site. And that seems to work as soon as you get this, uh, the, uh, this one wire functions to work. Or you can, of course, write your own one wire code. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Uh, this sen temperature sensor that we are using is very slow device. It, you can actually sample it uh, I think the maximum speed is around uh, about the, the uh, 800 milliseconds uh, the, the sampling uh, uh, time. So you need to wait along. So practically start this uh, uh, center code that starts the temperature conversion uh, or temperature measurement, and then just let the, uh, this this uh, uh, piece of to do something else, like reading the uh, A to D converter, which is on on the uh, <coughs> which is running on um, the the uh, on the background, uh, and then basically go and do the uh, data trans transmission. Uh, once a second, then it's quite safe to assume that the uh, this result is ready. Okay, um, another another one. One way bus timing is quite critical. Basically, it means that you also need to 
take care of that the uh, this any other interrupt does not happen when you are doing the uh, data transmission with this uh, device or not uh, uh, during a byte transfer or actually a bit transfer but anyways byte transfer during the byte transfer uh, this uh, say time consuming the, the interrupt can actually uh, destroy your data transmission <clears throat> on the other hand okay the, uh, let's see the uh, that was the, the registers scratch pad is the register what you would be accessing so that's where the, your temperature data is so temperature least significant byte and most significant byte is there and then also it has the cyclic redundance check crc and uh, i think there is a uh, in PSOC there is a component called crc uh, you just need to uh, find out if you can use that one there so if you want to be sure about that data transmission quality that the, you got all the bits correctly then you should also check that uh, uh, CRC value okay so cyclic redundant check Okay, and there is actually the speed. So if you're using 12 bit, 12 bit resolution, then it's 700 milliseconds of, of conversion time. And then there's also talk about CRC generation and a, a basically a the uh, formula how to calculate the uh, the, the this. CRC values. Okay. Um, what else? And actually, it has also these commands. First, the uh, uh, transaction. Let's see. ROM commands. So, so basically, these ROM commands after that one are. Uh, basically the same as any other ROM commands on any other uh, one wire device so for example search ROM it starts the uh, uh, this uh, device discovery start or then if you have a single slave on the bus then you can actually read that address 64-bit address by read ROM and after that one you can use match ROM on the uh, transaction so this is basically a pair read rom and match rom or search rom all the values there and then match rom value if you know the uh, rom value but there's also a command skip rom meaning that uh, uh, the, the, the uh, skip there's only we know that there's only one one wire device online so basically just skipping the rom you you don't need to uh set, send the 64-bit uh, address there to match that one so for the for this exercise i actually recommend using the skip rom okay and these are the uh, device specific function commands most importantly convert temperature so after sending this command to after skip rom command you send this one then wait for a while then you can actually read the scratch pad on a loop and basically then you are all set okay those are the command set actually Indicate temperature convert reach grasp uh, right you don't need that one here 
or copy or recall into so basically you just need the uh, convert and read scratch path from device dependent function command set okay rom commands those are general to any device and this is the function commands flowchart okay this this is a little bit messy i think uh, however there are also these um, nice examples two examples the uh, kind of a pseudo code which commands to send and which read in order to do whatever so especially um, okay here if you don't into account that this is the ball uh, for the bus with using parasite power it also used this this skip rom command so practically um, you can use that one and just uh, basically don't worry about that a strong pull up uh, for at least 10 milliseconds well uh, or actually you could also play around with it and see if you can get it to work on parasitic power so but anyways this this is a a good place to start by uh, what you do in order to read the, uh, read that uh, temperature measurement value okay um and the rest is actually just simple Okay, current and transition current temperatures on. So basically, it's both ADC and uh, this one wire device. Yeah, that was kind of missing from that one. Yes, I would like to see see also the the one wire device or one way of data there okay good um so let's get again what was the bone or where, where is the meat over the bone okay uh you can actually write your own uh one wire code although this document here actually shows you well up to here you can see the timing and so you can either write your own uh, the, the write bit read write one write zero zero read and reset signaling using this um, uh, CY delay function and that one or just go and uh, modify this code what they are uh, providing on the page and uh, use that one for the uh, basic transmission in my case actually I had to tweak a little bit of these numbers uh, not just remove these the, 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 uh, these values so it, it took some debugging to do uh, to avoid the too much of debugging I will show you a couple of tricks since this is time critical uh, data transmission if you're doing it on software then you must take into account that you your software <coughs> I shouldn't uh, uh, have a, the, 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 some delays on timing especially caused by say uh, some interrupt events during the, uh, the, the tr data transmission okay so use that as a mainframe and then uh, there we go 
on the data sheet use that path uh, for the, the uh, this, this operation okay otherwise this exercise starts again from the simple data acquisition exercise the exercise three there um okay what else do i have here uh demo of expected result okay yeah well you can take that take a look at that one and also i have the uh, link to the PSOC creator system reference guide there we go which shows the uh, this um, for example here are these power management system da -da 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 -da. delay APIs so see why delay APIs basically two of them one with milliseconds and one for microseconds uh, read these instructions really careful uh, since basically if especially for the side effects and such kind of things so they are also uh, the, the, all of these uh, data sheet they have these uh, known side effects and restrictions for this uh, the, the uh, pre-written code read those also okay um then yeah exercise tutorial okay that's basically what this is all about let me go and open the uh, creator and uh, i will show you a setting which may help you i have a feeling that i showed also this one last time but but anyways it wasn't uh, it wasn't there uh, on I, I didn't remember to push put, click this uh, record button okay not system clocks how to speed up the system especially on this case uh, this is quite critical that the, uh, the timing goes as planned on during the the process so if you have are uh, running the uh, system with cpu clock at 3 megahertz let me click the edit clock internal master oscillator which is the same as the uh, uh, oscillator for uh, the, the, the uh, cpu by default it's running at 3 megahertz which gives you with the three stage pipeline about one microsecond instruction cycle some of those uh, the the, the uh, values there on 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 that uh, the, the uh, one wire basically are just few microseconds so if one instruction takes one microsecond already th and basically then the function branching and that kind of thing actually and returning will take longer than that so they will be overhead so that way basically you have to do something with this um, of basically streamlining some of these functions like the uh, one ow write bit would call well this one it's a function call i would actually hardwire 
that code to access the port on PSOC right here. Then we have the call to tick delay. So in if you inside of the tick delay actually um, are using integer values there, say tick delay A. So practically you need to also hardwire also these these values in here to, to, to speed up the to minimize the overhead so every single extra function call is increasing the overhead it makes uh, timing diffi more difficult so streamlining those would be one thing and of course one thing would be just crank up the uh, speed here you go if 3 megahertz is is uh, not fast enough for timing we can uh, just click it uh, to 74.7 megahertz so that would actually give about um, that divided by three the roughly about more than 20 about 25 uh, MIPS processing so that's actually quite fast or anything in between so what happens when you crank up these uh, frequencies well the uh, system does not get uh, uh, the, the, the verse or more uh, it just consumes more power so for that reason and because this device in particular is targeted to low power uh, the applications then in principle you should run this uh, the, uh, the, the CPU as the lowest possible power or lowest possible clock frequency but but anyways one way to get more slack on the timing is to uh, just run this a CPU with a higher frequency okay now any questions uh, my question is do we really need to compare and calculate compare CRC value no you don't have to if you trust the value so if your values what you are reading there is uh, basically reading about 20 degrees celsius and you can modify it by warming it a bit with your hands then you are you can be pretty sure that the uh, device is giving correct values Let me type also that message there. Okay, any other questions? For exercise five, that is. <laughs> Okay, one more thing. What is the best way to convert LSB and MSB into float value? Well, I would first go B times 256 plus LSB, and that's actually a, a uint 16 type of value. 
just calculate the, uh, directly the, uh, the, the value and well the floating point then there's the uh, conversion on that device data sheet it gives actually the uh, conversion rate it, it depends on uh, the uh, device accuracy when it uh, turns on and if you haven't accessed or re re written this code then it basically should be on 12 bit mode okay Ah, yes, that is actually, well, yes, the uh, discrepancy in my words. So, um, pull up or open. Um, let's see. I will open it here. Let me just add a um, output. Digital output. Pin. It's not that way. What do you know? Digital output pin, uh, resistive pull up, meaning that you can drive it uh, low. And this actually resistive pull up keeps the uh, signal idle at one. If you have the uh, open drain drives low, it means that you need to have external pull up. Otherwise, you cannot set the, the, uh, the uh, state one. So it's basically either or. So uh, in turn, basically it's about, you can select bit between internal, which means <laughs> restrictive. or external open drain drive slow there we go both will work and actually you can have both at the same time in my uh, device here I have uh, basically the uh, this external pull-up resistor all the time there so in case you are using internal and external it'll work if you have internal pull-up then basically uh, it's just you know the, the parallel re resistors it still works ah yeah port address no port address If you use that code, then just the basically have that uh, as a dummy variable there. Or actually, my recommendation is my recommendation is that you would uh, replace that with this uh, function to access directly to the pin component. Then you don't need to to have that port address at all. But if you want to use that uh, function call just like that, then you need to of course write your write your access code there. But remember what I said about these overheads. It's just one extra function call. Okay, any other questions? And can I prevent one way data questions low the output without one way address every half second? Mm, okay, ah, haha, there's a trick. We have plenty of time. 
okay you had plenty of time actually where was the oh there so basically when you issue the convert where is convert uh, where is the convert 44 master issues convert okay ah, okay okay romless convert command okay you need to combine this a little bit so first you send skip rom and then convert after that you have 750 milliseconds time to do whatever so practically you just need to make sure that during that uh, data transmission the data transmission itself still runs around 16 kilobits per second which is relatively high uh, but they are relatively high uh, transmission speed but uh, during the conversion then you can actually uh, have anything so when you start the conversion uh, basically okay let's start it on for example here so, uh, let's see first reset pulse then the uh, uh, okay before this data transmission you uh, prevent interrupts for example disable the interrupts take master uh, reset on on the uh, one wire then skip rom command on one wire and after that uh, convert convert command on one wire and then you uh, the, 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 uh, enable the interrupts again okay then basically uh, you need to wait at least at 750 uh, milliseconds. I would actually there wait until uh, the, the every other the, the, uh, this two samples per second happens and then go and read the scratch pad. Read the scratch pad that with the, basically uh, on ROMless mode again and when you're reading it then you must actually again turn off the uh, this this uh, uh, hmm. interrupts but anyways so you, you need to just pl play around with the uh, enabling and disabling interrupts when you are trans uh, when you are doing transaction with the uh, with this device on one wire. But there's plenty of time to do whatever you need to do in between. Ah, uh, again, I sent actually something, uh, sorry. Hmm. Uh, one there. Everyone. Okay. Other questions? Okay, I don't see any other questions here. <clears throat> okay, you can still write those questions there. I, I try to answer, but 
I would like to actually now show you a little bit a quick peek on uh, the uh, to demonstrate with this capacitive sensing uh, for the uh, project project number one. Let me remove that part here. So well, that is my design. Not too much on it, um, and practically this is only for demos to de for demonstrations. I have the uh, PWM, and basically uh, there's a cap sense with some settings, and currently the cap sense actually I have one single uh, channel using no no filtering no to turn tuning but just I, i'm just interested about the raw results um and i added one generic sensor uh with 10 bits uh, resolution that's fine okay and then basically i just changed the uh, current here to 32 microseconds from the the uh, default we see 255 um for some reason i don't remember why but i i just played a little bit with the values okay that that's very simple single device and i mark that pin to port 1.7 which is next to ground pin and then uh, running the PWM actually for the blue LED light. So basically what the device itself of this program does is the, uh, uh, I have one single twisted pair line and now I should actually show you the uh, camera somewhere there. Not that one there, camera. So twisted pair wire looks like that. It it comes on a <laughs> uh, basically in big quantities, just laying around somewhere. I, I, any wire will do. Preferably hard, hard hard wire that you can twist around and as it to a pair and then just put it on your well. On your the the, the uh, connection that actually works just fine. Uh, I also have the demonstration. I have some. I'm making some flowers for the uh, growing them uh, on my for my garden for the summer. And uh, I have also a reference dry soil. This is quite dry, almost like dust. This has been has been watered, okay. And my device, what it does, okay. That you can you can already see it. Uh, the blue LED light is almost off. Well, it, I think it's totally off. But okay, when I move even my hand closer to that, it should lit. Yeah, it does. It does not really show up well. Those, those are disturbing a bit. Yep, it actually works. Even with the touching the uh, this one with my hand, it works. So basically, you can I, I can demonstrate it on on this uh, the the uh, dry soil doesn't it's it's not that bright as in in my uh, uh, wet soil okay not calibrated but anyways it, it would be just you know finding out the correct uh, soil or the, the uh, wetness and just make it as the uh, some sort of limit there okay so for the uh, greenhouse project you can have very simple sensors made, made these by yourself start selling those on ebay for 15 euros each. <laughs> hmm, should I start selling those? Yeah. Uh, okay.
but anyway so so that's that's practically the uh, uh, one of those sensors you can demonstrate and I've already uh, shared this project it's uh, on the link if you want to play around with it there's a link on uh, the project project green greenhouse automation all right wait for a while there we go uh, so there twisted pair wires and capsules component on a piece of creator so that that's actually the idea one way to measure moisture um, actually the uh, this sensor works also with the with some serious tweaking you can make it to work also for air humidity but uh, okay air humidity is different it's always about the uh, its relative humidity and relative humidity actually is also heavily uh, the, the uh, function of temperature and it's also the uh, when you compare this is absolute uh, humidity sensor this twisted pair since it basically it uh, the the uh, permeability of the air is changing the geometer is not changing for the ca capacitor so it must be the uh, media in between and uh, for for that one actually it's uh, it's quite linear with the uh, absolute humidity but on, on the soil absolute humidity works but for air it does not because on air you are interested about relative humidity and that's basically how much air can absorb well non-condensing uh, water and yeah as, as you know the, the uh, on very dry air it's usually it's you know minus 20 degrees <laughs> then this absolute humidity is almost zero but on the other on tropics on on uh, on say uh, 40 degrees and rain uh, relative humidity is 100% uh, of course but the absolute humidity is humongous and uh, the line in between is not linear it's very non-linear line between the absolute and relative humidity of air compared to temperature okay but anyways the temperature the humidity sensor works like that soil humidity or soil moisture okay um, no more questions there either so anything on exercise 5 okay next time we have the uh, session for uh, this, this project so basically I would like you to start thinking about which topic pro uh, project topic is for you. Uh, the, uh, the greenhouse automation project, that's, uh, I modified it a bit so that it, it can be done without buying any extra equipment. So practically you can use the kit what you got from Robert Mikalik. And, uh, but if you happen to have these uh, sensors around, say, uh, well, one which is quite interesting is the ambient light sensor. If you happen to have a uh, photodiode, uh, then basically, uh, then you can use that one. Or if you have any, say, uh, LED, any uh, uh, red blue green the visible light LED it works all also as photodiode 
the sen it's not that sensitive but it still works okay um, then there's a um, Raspberry Pi I never worked with Raspberry Pi before but I want to do the project with it would you recommend that yes if you want to also learn uh, how to use the uh, Raspberry Pi the uh, basics of it so yes I would recommend it as a learning exercise Setting up the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, will take about 50 minutes. Less than that, actually. Depending on, on what kind of package you have. So, uh, currently I think they are selling Raspberry Pi 4s. But if you want to have really, really cheap one, then practically all Raspberry Pis after the second one uh they, they they are called compatible the first one is also called compatible except that the first one didn't have the wireless lan yet so second version of raspberry pi had the uh, the, the this, uh, wireless uh wireless uh, the the the, the uh, capability already Okay, let me stop recording now.